And I'm Esther, and we are participating in RoboCup Asia Pacific under the Cold Space Rescue First Steps Uniting category. Our team name is Esther, and we are from Singapore. We have participated in NRC, IDE, RoboCup on stage, and the ICO challenge. Now, moving on to the challenge task. The task was for the robot to score the highest during the five minute game run. The problems we investigated were how to pick up and deposit objects efficiently, how to differentiate between the colors on the map how to travel around the map efficiently, how to avoid traps efficiently, and how to maximize the number of points scored. To do these, we targeted specific squares on the map, came up with a color decision tree, used different movement algorithms to improve the performance of our robot, used speed control, varied the direction of turning for trap avoidance, collected two RCB sets, and used object counters to keep track of loaded objects. After much testing and tuning, we managed to achieve a score we were satisfied with. Our scores overall improved from 1,200 to 2,200 points on average, with a higher score of 2,540. In conclusion, we found that to optimize the performance of a robot, we needed to determine which strategies allowed the robot to score the highest while making efficient use of time, before combining them and utilizing them together. Next, we'll be elaborating more on the challenge mission. To score points, the robot must first pick up objects. The objects are of different values depending on their type as well as their location. Following, it needs to deposit objects in either of the deposit zones. Depositing one set of red sign and black objects scores a bonus of 90 points, while depositing two sets earns a bonus of 180 points. While doing so, the robot must not enter traps, in which it will lose all of its loaded objects. The mission can be split into a few mini-tasks, which are to avoid traps, pick up and deposit objects, and to move efficiently to maximize the time given through strategies such as traveling to specific locations on the map. The mission would be solved if these mini tasks were completed efficiently, as robot will be able to function effectively and achieve a higher score. Now, moving on to our AI algorithms and resources and their implementation. Firstly, the color decision tree as seen in the slides. The preliminary map had 10 different colors, so we had to find a way to differentiate them. We used thresholds, which are the midpoints between two values, rather than simply hard coding the values, as this increased chances of the robot sensing the correct color. Next, the movement strategies we implemented. To begin, we had a differential steer function, which combines two inputs, the speed and the rotation rate of the robot, to calculate the speed for each wheel. Thus, in order to facilitate efficient movement of the robot, we implemented different algorithms which calculated the rotation rate to be inputted into this function. Firstly, wall rotation, which prevented the robot from hitting walls and obstacles. The rotation rate is dependent on how far the robot is from the wall, which we determine using the ultrasonic sensors. When the robot is further away from the wall, there is a low risk of it hitting it, and it does not need to turn too much or too sharply. Hence, the rotation rate will be lower, and vice versa. Examples of how wall rotation was used during the run can be seen in the slides. Secondly, centering rotation, which was calculated using the side ultrasonic sensors, allowed the robot to remain centralized between two walls or obstacles, which reduces the chances of the robot hitting a wall. We also use centering rotation to determine the direction the robot turns. Thirdly, we implemented square targeting to allow the robot to move to specific squares for more efficient use of time. By using the coordinates of the robot and the target square, as well as the current angle the robot was facing, the angle the robot needed to turn to could be calculated using the tangent inverse function. It is then converted into a rotation rate, allowing the robot to quickly hit towards the target square via the shortest possible distance. We use this to allow the robot to travel on a fixed route, the route as is seen in the picture. The robot will first target the middle square to collect two sign objects before targeting the red square below it to collect two red objects. Then, it will travel to the bottom right square to collect two black objects. After doing so, it will travel to the top left deposit zone before repeating this cycle. We then combined wall and square target rotation using a weighted average to obtain the final rotation rate, which would be inputted into the differential steer function. Next, speed control. We had multiple different speeds based on the position of the robot and the angle the robot was facing. Originally, we had three speeds, a fast speed for squares without traps, a medium speed for those adjacent to traps, and a slow speed for those with traps. These squares can be seen in the image of the map in the slides. However, we realized that this could be improved by varying the speeds of the squares adjacent to traps, depending on the angle of the robot. For example, if the robot was facing the trap, it will run at a slow speed. We converted the difference between the robot's angle and that of the trap into an error and increase the speed accordingly. 
This saves time and maximizes efficiency of the robot. In addition, the robot would collect two RCB sets. This was because during our various trial runs, we found that collecting two RCB sets maximized the performance of our robot and allowed it to obtain the maximum bonus. Furthermore, in order to efficiently implement track avoidance, we analyzed the map and programmed the bot to turn in the direction it needed to travel to while taking into account its current position, as can be seen in the slides. This helped the robot to save time. We also used various object counters. We created a variable, which will be updated throughout the run to keep track of the number of loaded objects the robot had. This allowed us to implement other strategies to improve the performance of the robot. We only implemented track avoidance when the robot had loaded objects. It will stop collecting objects once it had six loaded objects, and it will only deposit if it had six loaded objects. The square the robot targeted was also dependent on this variable. We also implemented object counters to keep track of the number of loaded red, cyan, and black objects the robot had, thus allowing the robot to collect RCB sets. Lastly, we used the time counter variable to keep track of how much time the robot had been running for. When there were 20 seconds left in the game, the robot would target the top left deposit zone if it had objects in its inventory. We used the strategy as we realized that the robot tended to have several loaded objects left when time ran out. Hence, by implementing this strategy, we were able to maximize the number of points the robot got through depositing all of its remaining objects. For our tools and resources, we referred to other iQ presentation videos to learn from the finalists. We also use tools such as Sublime Text to code easily and Replit, which we use for debugging. Now, moving on to debugging. When we added something new, it will not work immediately, and hence we will have to debug it. A reason it might not have performed well in the beginning could be due to tuning or errors in our calculation and logic. To debug tuning issues, we will test different values until we found what allowed the robot to perform the best. As for calculation or logic errors, we utilize Replit to print values to check our calculations and test that all cases were working correctly. The highest score we achieved was around 2540, and on average, our robot would score around 2100 to 2200 points. While we are satisfied with this result, we also think that we can definitely improve on the scores even more, for example, by improving its consistency. Now, we'll be sharing on how we came to implement the strategies mentioned. Firstly, speed control, which is dependent on the position and the angle of the robot. In the beginning, we ran the robot at one slow speed throughout the run, but this ended up wasting too much time, so we changed it to have two different speeds, one for squares with traps and one for those without. However, we realized that this was not the most effective method as there were squares adjacent to traps, and running slowly in all of these squares wasted time as well. Thus, we decided to use the aforementioned method, saving time and allowing the robot to deposit an average of five times per run. For collection of RCB sets, we decided to collect two RCB sets for all five deposits after testing two other methods. Firstly, not collecting RCB sets at all. We didn't use this as scores were rather inconsistent, as seen in the chart, and would not be worth taking the risk. The other method we tried was to collect two RCB sets for the first four deposits, after which the robot would collect only one RCB set in case there was a lack of objects. Its consistency was higher and scores averaged around 2,000. However, collecting two RCB sets would achieve a higher score while maintaining consistency. Hence, we chose this strategy. Lastly, for track avoidance, the final strategy that we use is to vary the direction that the robot turns depending on its target square. We decided this over our original strategy, in which the robot only turned in one direction. This is because when the robot hits the trap and turns to the right, square targeting will force it to turn back into the trap. This may result in it getting stuck in a loop and wasting time. Thus, we use the other strategy. Our strategy is not perfect and there's much we can improve on and many others we could attempt. For example, for object collection, to ensure that the robot does not waste time if objects run out, we could have done it in a time-based manner or try other routes where the robot could travel across more areas in the map. Lastly, we could keep track of where the different features of the map are located so that the robot can target squares more effectively. Now, we'll be sharing about our learning experience. This competition has taught us how to think critically and logically. It encouraged us to think out of the box and come up with different strategies and also allowed us to explore different functionalities of C that we have not had the chance to learn about before. We also learned to be careful and patient during the debugging process to ensure that all of our bases were covered and that we did not make any mistakes. We also needed to communicate well with one another to share strategies online and quickly test them to find out what worked and what did not. To the other Coastway participants, we are thankful that we get to be a part of this community with you and we hope that this challenge has been as meaningful for you as it has been for us. Lastly, we would like to thank our teachers, Mr. Yeo and Mrs. Leong, our instructor, Mr. Kenneth Chow, and our friends for supporting us.
as well as the organizers for giving us the opportunity to participate in this competition. We hope you have enjoyed our presentation. Thank you.